بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد as we mention about itikaf the itikaf it is to stay in the masjid with the intention and doing actions and deeds seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is itikaf. Regardless of whether that's in the evening or the night, uh, in the evening or the day. And that's what the ulama, how they define itikaf. And some of the things related to itikaf, which we need to know about the time for itikaf. And as we know, itikaf is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is permissible for both men and women to make itikaf. Of course, in their separate respect, respective places. And without there being fitna, of course. And pertinent to itikaf is the time for itikaf. And the ijma of the ulama, meaning the consensus of the ulama, as Imam Ibn Abdul Ab, uh, Ibn Abdul Bar related, and in accordance with the four Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Shafi'i, wa Imam Malik, wa Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah, jamian, that all of them are in agreement that it is permissible to make itikaf during Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. So meaning if a person wants to make itikaf even after Ramadan, any time, they decide between Asr and Maghrib, I'm going to make itikaf, for example. Then that is permissible with the intention to do so and meeting the ahkam uh, pertinent to itikaf. And some of the evidence in regards to this for example, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتقف في كل رمضان عشر أيام فلما كان العام الذي قبض فيه اعتقف عشرين يوما that Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make itikaf every Ramadan for 10 days and when it was the last year of the Prophet Wasallam's life he made itikaf during that Ramadan for 20 days and this is uh, Ruahu Bukhari this is in Bukhari letting us know that itikaf that the time the Prophet ﷺ used to make Allah uh, as a regular act of ibadah, he used to do it 10 days, the last 10 nights. And during the last uh, year of his life, the last Ramadan that he fasted, he made it 20 days. So that is amongst the many uh, uh, evidences which show us that itikaf is not restricted uh, to just Ramadan, even though that hadith was just related to Ramadan, but there's other ahadith which show us that it is not uh, just related to Ramadan. And then the issue arises, when, when is it, uh, When is it permissible to begin your itikaf and when is it impermissible to make itikaf? So the ulama, they have some differences regarding this issue of when to begin the itikaf in Ramadan. And there's two basic opinions regarding this. The first opinion is that the itikaf, if it's going to be in the last 10 nights, then that the person should begin after Maghrib. After Maghrib on the 21st 
uh, night uh, of, of Ramadan. And this is in accordance with the four Imams. They have agreement on this, that it should happen after Maghrib. And then they mention as evidence the hadith of uh, Abi Sa'id al uh, uh, al radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Where the Prophet sallallahu he made itikaf. So the night of the 21st, he sallallahu alayhi wa made itikaf. So this is one of the evidences that they use for beginning itikaf after Maghrib on the 21st night. And the second view, which is the view of one of the, the opinions of Imam Ahmed and one of the and uh, Ibn Mundir also chose this in Ibn Al-Qayyum as well as Imam As-Sanani Rahimahumullah Jami'an they held the view that the person should begin itikaf after Salat Al-Fajr of the day of the 21st day so after Salat Al-Fajr begin itikaf the 21st day if someone wants to do it the, the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan so those are the two views and their evidence for this is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha arada an ya'takifa salla fajr thumma dakhala mu'takifuhu so Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he wanted to make itikaf then he would pray Fajr, then he would become a Mu'takif, meaning he would uh, begin his Itikaf after Fajr. So that's their evidence for that, showing us that there's some, there's some room, bi'idnillah, for, uh, in regards to this, because they both have sound evidence from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and giving us that it is not something where it's very restrained and restricted. So in this issue, there is room for doing either or. Bi'idnillah ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And a very important issue arises. When is itikaf prohibited from the uh, last 10 nights of Ramadan? Itikaf is prohibited after Maghrib, after Ghurub al-Shams, the last day of Ramadan. So it is not permissible to make itikaf because then you will be into Eid. So that night it is not permissible to make itikaf. And this is in accordance with the, this is in, a, the, the four Imams are in agreement. The madhab of uh, Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, the Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah, jami'an. So they had agreements. They were in agreement with regards to uh, this being prohibited to make itikaf the maghrib of the last day of Ramadan. Another incredibly important issue arises about what is itikaf, meaning what is the least amount of time we can do for itikaf? Do we have to make a two days? Do we have to make a day? Do we, you know, what is uh, the mudda or the time period for itikaf? So, the last day of Ramadan, as we said, is the last, uh, the last day of Ramadan after Maghrib is the, uh, is the time when it's prohibited to make it to calf. Ramadan is over. But the least amount of time that a person can be considered a mu'takif, the ulama differ over. So the ulama, they differ over the, the, um, the time period or the, the least amount of time to be considered itikaf. And they had uh, two different opinions. Predominantly, the first opinion is that the least amount of time for itikaf, and I'm, I hold this view, is that it just even one second. 
even if you go with the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa to come closer to Allah and you stay in the masjid for 10 minutes. You say, I'm going to stay for 10 minutes and you do the actions of itikaf and you don't busy yourself with actions of the dunya, you follow the ahkam itikaf, then this is considered itikaf. Or if you wanted to do between two salats, I think I'll stay from itikaf from dhuhr to maghrib then that is considered itikaf according to this state, this uh, uh, view. And this is the view uh, of the Hanafiyyah and the Shafi'iyyah. And it's one of the views of Imam Ahmed. And Ibn Hazm also chose this view. And Imam Shokani as well. And Imam bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, from our ulama of this time. And may Allah have mercy upon them all, all those great imams and their great khidma to the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in teaching the people Islam and bringing forth beneficial knowledge. So this view is a view that there is no limit on the least amount of time you can consider yourself a mu'takif, you can go in the masjid, seclude yourself for even if it's just 10 minutes, even if it's one hour, if it's, even if it's between some salats, some of the prayers, then this is sufficient as itikaf. And they use the general adilla from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاقِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not, he's talking about subhanahu wa ta'ala having relations with the wives, that you should not have relations with your wives, uh, and you are aqifun. Uh, uh, that you are from the people who are making itikaf, secluding yourself in the masjid to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid. That you should not uh, have relations and so forth during itikaf that violates your itikaf. So from that evidence, they say basically that every Stay, stay, sitting in the masjid with the intention to come closer to Allah, then this is considered itikaf. And there is no minimal amount of period, and there's no maximum amount of period, uh, time period for this. And because there is nothing restraining and restricting this act of ibadah in the shara, there's no hud which is distinguished from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, there's no boundaries distinguished in the Sharia, so uh, it falls under the generality of that Adilla. The second view regarding itikaf is that uh, that the, the least amount of itikaf should be a day and a night. And this is the madhab of Imam Malik. And that's because the Malikiya they make as a condition for itikaf that a person must fast to be a mu'takif, that they must be fasting, they must fast, and fasting could only can only be completed as fast as fasting during the day. So it requires at least a day, and uh, at least one, uh, at least a full day. So that itikaf would be cons would be a day and the night, according to the Malikiya. And so that is something very important for us to to have knowledge about. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to do itikaf before Ramadan is over, to spend time where you just seclude yourself in the masjid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving this worldly life behind you, reflecting on your Lord, reading Quran, making dua, supplication, and doing those acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those things are going to bring you closer to Allah. May Allah bless us with that. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.